Hello? Hello? Anyone there? Hi. Hi. Hi, Kazim. Hi. <laughs> Ah, uh, I think that went well. The jury seemed to be listening carefully to what I said, and a couple of them seemed to get it, you know. So um, now we have to wait it out. Do you have any questions for me at this stage? Can I see my mum? Uh, they've suspended all visits because of the virus, but look, I spoke to your mum earlier and I can get any message to her that you want. Is there anything else? No. Okay. It could be a few hours, so I am going to log off now and I'll dial back in when the judge messages me. Oh, no, wait. Sorry. Uh, I did have a question. Um, how's your baby? She's fine. She's, uh, she's sleeping. Is everything okay? Can you wait with me? Please? Well, I would, but I've got to catch up on all these new rules around electronic hearings. Please? I haven't spoken to no one but my cellmate in days. How have you got a cellmate in a single person cell? They're packing us in. What? They should be spreading you out right now. No, nah, they say they got no space left. And my bed's right next to the fucking toilet now. Oh. Is that your baby? Is that your daughter? Yeah. Do you want to see her? <laughs> oh, she's so cute. She looks like you, I think. You think? Everyone says she looks like her other mummy, which, which makes no sense, because biologically she is mine, but uh, here you go. How are you holding up in there? Man's say I'll be fine because I'm young, but I'll worry about my mum, you know? She'll be okay. You have to take care of looking after yourself in there. I don't even know why I'm in here. Like, everyone at Lovebox was on stuff, not just me. And all those white people getting fucked up and no one said nothing, but security following us the whole time. I mean, you're right. It is unfair, but, you know, hopefully the jury will realise that. And you weren't selling it, you know. Why are they treating me like I'm some big dealer anyway? Well, as we discussed, the problem with the law is that supplying drugs means giving them to anyone, including your friends. Oh, hang on a minute, there's a message from the judge. Wait. No, surely not this quickly. There's a verdict, apparently. What, already? Yeah, apparently. Oh, wait, the judge is dialing in now. Right, Miss Johnson, we have a verdict. Uh, Your Honour, it's only been a few minutes. Well, last time I checked, there were no rules against a jury being efficient. Well, in ordinary circumstances, I would, of course, not raise it, Your Honour, but given the new way of working, might it be best to give the jury time to adjust to making this decision remotely? Yeah, I, I also have a concern that deliberating from home might be more about hurrying things up than anything else. Well, we all have other things to be doing, Miss Johnson, so let's get on with it. <clears throat> ah, foreman of the jury. Have you reached a verdict upon which all six of you are agreed? No, Your Honour. Have you reached a verdict upon which at least five of you are agreed? Yes, Your Honour. Your Honour, forgive me for interrupting, but a majority verdict requires at least two hours and ten minutes. We haven't even had ten minutes yet, and this is with a jury of six rather than the usual twelve. Have you read the most recent circular? Yes, Your Honour. And uh, well, there's nothing about majority verdicts, just, just more rules around less jurors. That was yesterday's circular. Today's directs me to accept majority verdicts from the outset. Juries are struggling at home and the justice system needs to be sped up. With respect, Your Honour, this quick and dirty approach cannot be right for someone facing imprisonment. A, a fair trial is a human right. It's enshrined in law. 
for now. Foreman, you will only speak when you are spoken to, or I shall hold you in contempt. Understood? My apologies, Your Honour. Your Honour, with only six jurors instead of the usual 12, how can it be right that we're allowed to pass a majority verdict at all, let alone after a few minutes? Well, this virus requires drastic measures, Miss Johnson, or there won't be any humans left to assert their rights. Foreman. On the count of possession with intent to supply Class A drugs, namely MDMA, do you find this defendant guilty or not guilty? Guilty. Please, no. Mr. Khan, keep quiet. Oh, please, I, I made a mistake. Please, I, I can't stay here. If you don't shut up, you'll be in there for even longer. Foreman, thank you to you and your fellow jurors for your service. May I ask you to leave us now, please? Now, Miss Johnson, shall we move to sentencing? I say at once that this offence warrants a custodial sentence, so my hands are almost completely tied. Your Honour, I ask the court to depart from sentencing guidelines. Although they suggest prison, in my submission, this is a case in which prison is both unnecessary and unwarranted. I ask the court to consider house arrest for Kazim rather than a sentence in prison. Like the rest of us, you mean? What sort of punishment would that be? Your Honour, sometimes sentencing can be about a second chance. And that is what he needs. Kazim is a young man who has never been in trouble with the police before. This was an isolated incident involving a group of friends at a festival. Kazim is currently sharing a single person cell and the conditions are inhumane. Miss Johnson, I'm sure you don't need reminding that you are to address me on the law, not on the politics. Mr. Khan, tell me, what is it like in there? Um, well, it's not... Honor, this. what he's trying to say is that... Please, Miss Johnson, I would like to hear from Mr. Khan. Mr. Khan, tell me, what do you mean by not good? Well, it's pretty scary. Um, I, I know this is going to sound dumb, but there's almost no toilet paper left, so I feel dirty. Like, really dirty. But there's no soap, neither, so I can't wash my hands like the TV keeps telling me to. And yesterday they said that too many guards are going off sick, so we're going to have to stay in our cells, and they might have to stop daily showers. I was not told about all this. Your Honour, he's telling the truth. Kazim, tell his Honour what you told me this morning about that guy you know. Yeah. Um, so, there was this one guy who was in a cell by himself, uh, but then some new guy came and there was no space left, so they got put in together. Um, and both got sick, uh, both in hospital. Um, one of them's dead now. And he's the fifth person from the prison. Did we start calling this place the barrel because we're the fish and <laughs> they don't even need no gun? Your Honour, although I accept the guidelines... Johnson, just give me a moment to think. 
Mr. Khan. Mr. Khan, I am about to pass sentence. And if I hear so much as a whimper from you, I will hold you in contempt. In accordance with the guidelines, I sentence you to two years in prison. Please, no. That's... Based on the fact that you have not been in trouble before, I am prepared to suspend it. The court clerk will be in touch, and if you have any questions, you may ask them of your barrister. Good day. I don't understand. It means that uh, as long as you don't get in trouble for the next two years, you won't be recalled to prison. You should be released soon. No. <laughs> Can you please tell my mum? <laughs> I, d I just wanted to stop worrying. So how long will it be? Well, I'll call your mum when we're done here. Um, in, uh, in terms of how long, you just have to wait. Uh, there's a bit of a backlog. And, uh, Hello? Hello? Anyone there?